Number 10 then, 7 marks here for show that this is a factor of some polynomial. You like that, you get to put your wee table down. 2 marks for that. And then 5 marks for carrying on to solve that equation equal to 0. 7 marks, just for putting these wee numbers down, you like this bit. 1, 3, negative 7, 9, negative 30. They're all there, there should be 5 of them, there are 5. And if that's a factor, the negative 5 should be a root. Negative 5 should produce the answer 0. There's no point feeding it through that because you'd be wanting to carry out the effective division, the synthetic division. So feeding that through, what would that be? Bring it down, multiply it up. Add it down, negative 2, multiply up 10. Add it down, 3, multiply up, negative 15. Add it down, negative 6, multiply up, 30. There you go. Now you have to make a statement. The remainder equals 0, which means that x plus 5 divided in exactly, which means that x plus 5 is a factor. But now in part b, we're going to have to solve this equal to 0. Oops. Solve that. That means factorise it. Well, you've still got a cubic here, but you just keep on going. So now I want to do that again. Find another number that goes in. Now this time this part ends in a 6. So you've got 1s and 2s and 1... Try a 2. Because 1's not going to quite work. So 2. What about, what about 2? So that's 1. Bring it up. 2. 0. Oh, that's quite handy because multiply up. 0. Bring it down. Oh, that's, ah, there you go. 2 3s are 6. So that worked as well. I don't know if you need to make any more statements to say remainder equals zero. So x minus two as a root is a factor. Well, that's you done, because now you're down to the wee quadratic. So now I can fill this in. So my two factors were, had x plus five to start with, you just discovered x, oops, minus two, and it left the quadratic factor x squared with no middle term and a plus 3. Oh, well, that's no use. Because that can't possibly factorise. That can't possibly equal 0. Because the lowest an x squared could get to is 0. So the lowest that can ever be is 3. So you've only got two results. So that means the only solutions are x equals negative 5 or x equals 2. Better give a reason for this. As x squared plus 3 is always greater than or equal to, not greater than or equal to zero, what am I doing? Greater than or equal to three. So no solution. Number 11 then for what? Four marks here. Evaluate this integral, this definite integral involving trig functions for three marks, okay? So that would be, it's ready to go, so you can just go in with the evaluation brackets. Sine goes back to cos, but unfortunately a negative, because cos would produce a negative sign. So it's negative 5 cos x. Cos goes back to sine, so it retains the negative. That's to get evaluated from pi up and 2 to pi. So it's just a case of doing that then. So negative 5, first of all, pi. Negative 5 cos pi minus 3 sine pi. Take away negative 5 cos pi upon 2 minus 3 sine pi upon 2. Now just think of the little graphs because they'll either be 1s or zeros or negative 1s. So what have you got? Oh, I'll put a wee note here. There's the cosine graph, there's the sine graph. The ones you're interested in are pi up and 2 and pi. Pi up and 2 and pi. So cos of pi is negative 1. So that's a negative 5 times a negative 1. Take away 3 times and the sine of pi is 0. Oh. Minus. Negative 5 times, now the cos of pi is 0 minus 3 times, and the sine of pi upon 2 is 1. So that's a 5, take away a 0 is a 5. There's nothing there. 
Take away a negative is plus a 3, so the answer is 8. Now part B's got a bit, it's only worth one mark as well, it's a bit of a pest because I don't have this diagram that you have to shade the area and shade the area that this represents. Well, I suppose I could try and quickly manufacture it. 5 sine and negative 3 cos, using the rotating vectors, produces this as a result. The angle should be a bit more than that. So that graph would look like it's going to start here. And then it's going to go up, so it's just going to go like this, for instance. So it's like a sine graph that's been shifted forward by a certain amount. By the amount inverse tan of 3 over 5. Oh. Right, I had to use a calculator. That's about 30 degrees. So this is like a sine graph that's been shifted forward 30. Right. So... That would be the zero, so that's going forward 30 from there. That would be 90 more than it, so that would be like the pi upon 2 there. That would have been the 180, so I'll have to move back a bit. And that would have been the pi. So the bit you've worked out should look something like this. Just shading the area under the curve from pi upon 2 to pi.